Hello dear students, our lesson for today is all about work. At the end of this lesson you are expected to determine the work done by a force acting on a system, define work as a scalar or dot product of force and displacement, and interpret the work done by a force in one dimension as an area under a force versus position curve. In physics many times words have meanings that are not consistent with how these same words are used in everyday life. For example, in physics, work takes on a technical meaning that often contradicts its everyday usage. Work relates to how a force acts while a system undergoes a displacement. If no displacement occurs, then in the realm of physics, no work is done. For the same displacement, a larger force does more work. However, work in the physics sense is even more strange because if the force is perpendicular to the displacement then no work is done. So how do we know when work is done? Work is energy transferred to or from a system by means of an external force acting on that system. These transfers are like transfers of money to and from a bank account. If a system consists of a single particle or particle-like object, the work done on the system by a force can change only the kinetic energy of the system. When a force acts upon an object to cause a displacement of the object, it is said that work was done upon the object. There are three key ingredients to work, force, displacement, and cause. In order for a force to qualify as having done work on an object, there must be a displacement and the force must cause the displacement. Mathematically, work can be expressed by the following equation. Work equals F, D, cosine theta. Where F is the force, D is the displacement, and the angle theta is defined as the angle between the force and the displacement vector. Perhaps the most difficult aspect of the above equation is the angle, theta. The angle is not just any, old angle, but rather a very specific angle. The angle measure is defined as the angle between the force and the displacement. To gather an idea of its meaning, consider the following three scenarios. Scenario A. A force acts rightward upon an object as it is displaced rightward. In such an instance, the force vector and the displacement vector are in the same direction. Thus, the angle between F and D is zero degrees. Scenario B. A force acts leftward upon an object that is displaced rightward. In such an instance, the force vector and the displacement vector are in the opposite direction. Thus, the angle between F and D is 180 degrees. Scenario C. A force acts upward on an object as it is displaced rightward. In such an instance, the force vector and the displacement vector are at right angles to each other. Thus, the angle between F and D is 90 degrees. The meaning of theta. When determining the measure of the angle in the work equation, it is important to recognize that the angle has a precise definition, it is the angle between the force and the displacement vector. Whenever a new quantity is introduced in physics, the standard metric units associated with that quantity are discussed. In the case of work and also energy, the standard metric unit is the joule, abbreviated J1 joule is equivalent to one newton of force causing a displacement of one meter. In other words, one joule equals one newton meter. There are also non-standard units of work such as foot pound, kilogram meter per second square times m, and kilogram meter square per second square. The work done by a constant force is the product of the component of the force in the direction of motion and the magnitude of the displacement. This is expressed in equation work equals force times cosine theta times delta r or the displacement. Forces perpendicular to the motion do no work. This is because when an object is displaced horizontally on a flat table, the normal force N and the gravitational force Fg do no work since cosine theta is equals 90 degrees which is equals to zero. Now let us try to calculate work by solving the sample problems. A 100 Newton force is applied to move a 15 kg object a horizontal distance of 5 meters at a constant speed. Determine the amount of work done by the applied force. Using our formula for work, substitute 100 for F, 5 for D, 
and the angle is zero because the force and the displacement are both rightward as shown, giving us a value of work of 500 joules. A 100 Newton force is applied at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal to move a 15 kg object at a constant speed for a horizontal distance of 5 meters. Determine the amount of work done by the applied force. Using our formula for work, substitute 100 for F, 5 for D, and the angle is 30 as shown. Giving us a value of work of 433 joules. An upward force is applied to lift a 15 kg object to a height of 5 meters at constant speed. Determine the amount of work done by the applied force. To answer this, let us first determine the applied force. Recalling our lesson about balanced forces, we all know that the force equal to this upward force is the weight of the object. Writing weight equals mass times gravity. We substitute 15 kilograms for the mass and 9.8 meters per square second for the gravity. We now have the weight of 147 newtons which is also equals to the force. Now to calculate work, we simply substitute 147 newtons as the force, 5 meters for the displacement, and an angle of zero since both the force and the displacement are in the same direction. Important note, work equals force times distance. Work is sometimes force multiplied by distance, but not always. If you think that work equals force times distance, then you probably think that you automatically do work every time you exert a force. That's not true, either. The work energy equation says that work done by the net force on an object equals the object's change in kinetic energy. More simply, work equals change in kinetic energy. This means that if an object's kinetic energy doesn't change, then no work has been done on the object, whether or not a force has been exerted. In the diagram above, the green block is moving to the right. The red force F1 does work on the block because it has a component in the direction of motion. The blue force F2 does not do work on the block, because it does not have a component in the direction of motion. Now, remember that forces cause accelerations, Newton's second law, but an object can accelerate by first, speeding up, in which case the object's kinetic energy increases. Second, slowing down, in which case the object's kinetic energy decreases. Or third, changing direction, in which case the object's kinetic energy does not change. So, an object's kinetic energy will only change if the force acting on the object changes the object's speed. This will only happen if there is a component of the force in the direction that the object moves. Therefore, a force will do work, only if the force has a component, in the direction that the object moves. Work as a scalar or dot product. The work done by a constant force is the scalar product of the force and displacement vectors. If you can recall our recent lesson, the formula for the scalar or dot product is a dot b cosine theta. Comparing it with the formula for work, we can see that A is the force, B is the displacement or delta R, while cosine theta remains the same for both. Lastly, work is an area under the force versus position curve. The basic work relationship W equals FD is a special case which applies only to constant force along a straight line. That relationship gives the area of the rectangle shown, where the force F is plotted as a function of displacement. In the more general case of a force which changes with displacement, the work may still be calculated as the area under the curve. That ends our lesson for today. Have a nice day.